everyone, I'm Erica, and I'm here today to share my story with all of you. Who am I? Well, this is what you are going to discover for yourself after hearing my full story. Have you ever felt that someone was watching you all the time? Someone watching your every move and that even your inner feelings were being watched? I've been there, and I still feel it to this day. It might seem spooky to some of you, and indeed it is. What happened to me almost destroyed my life. I was just an ordinary girl, an only child. My father used to work in a garage and my mother was a bank employee. It is true that we never spent that much time together. Nevertheless, our family was very close. I was in my final school year. Expectations for me were very high because despite being a cheerful, lively, and playful girl, I regularly attended my classes and I was a ballerina and used to perform in the city theater. Being an only child, mom and dad have always wanted to make a successful girl out of me, both socially and academically. At first sight, looks can be very deceiving. Maybe because of the way I looked, my stable, fun life, and my promising future. You could never believe that what was inside of me was the exact opposite. I worked hard to make sure that the shell in which I hid was very convincing, and I was able to hide the fact that I was absolutely miserable, totally unconfident, and always scared. I was scared of almost everything. I was scared of what people might think of me, scared of what my family might think of me. I was scared of failure, and scared of the future even. What if I couldn't keep my life on track? What if I failed? What if I wasn't really that successful, playful girl that everyone looked up to? Have you ever been in my shoes? Do you know how difficult that feeling can be? From the outside, my life was so perfect that I successfully managed to not only fool the people around me, but I was able to fool myself as well, which made it almost impossible for me to guess what was about to happen. One day, the girls in my ballet team and I heard that there would be a contest in the city and that the best dancer would win a ticket to the biggest ballet performance in the world, which takes place once every five years. I thought to myself that I must win that competition and win the ticket. On the day of the competition, even though I'd been practicing my routine day and night and it wasn't the first time for me to perform in front of an audience, I still felt so terrified, almost like I'd have a panic attack. I was humming my favorite song and clapping on my leg as I was extremely anxious while I waited for them to call my name onto the stage. It was nothing out of the ordinary, though. I mean, I'd been on stage hundreds of times before. It wasn't long before I heard a very faint nearby voice saying, she will start her routine now. She is looking at the audience, and she is looking very neat. I looked back to see where the voice was coming from, but there were dozens of other dancers who were standing behind me. I thought to myself, it could be any of them. No big deal. I will not let anything distract me now. They called my name, and I walked up onto the stage. I remember very well that I saw nothing but the faces of the judges staring at me. I wanted to win. I had to. It was an opportunity that comes once in a lifetime. Music started to play, and I heard the same sound once again. This time it whispered, She is starting her routine now. She is looking at the audience. She is looking at the judges with fear in her eyes. She will fall. I stopped dancing, and to the astonishment of everyone, I started to look around me in a failed attempt to find the source of the voice. Who was talking? But it was in vain. I screamed at the top of my lungs, Shut up! And then I heard the voice once again saying, she will run away now from that place and never look back. And that was exactly what I did. I didn't understand what happened back there. I went home as fast as I could. I'd ruined everything. I felt like such a pathetic loser. On my way home, there was no trace of the voice. It had simply disappeared. What was going on? It was the first time for me to hear that voice. My whole body was trembling like crazy. A thousand thoughts raced through my mind. I didn't know what was wrong with me, and I didn't want to know. It didn't matter. What mattered was that everything was fine again, right? I reached home, and once I was there, the voice reappeared. It started to haunt my every step. She is opening the door. She is running to her room. She is locking the door. I had no idea what it was or what was happening to me. The voice was hunting me down, and that was just the beginning. It's safe to say that it was on that day that the voice entered my life. I hid in my bed and kept on telling myself, it is not real, it is not real, until the voice finally calmed down, and I was finally able to catch my breath. 
At dinner, when my family was present, I waited for the right moment and asked, Mom, Dad, what does it mean when you hear voices in your head? My father responded in a heartbeat, It means that you're insane, and then laughed out loud. My mother looked at him with anger since he wasn't taking my question seriously. Then she looked at me and said, Why are you asking, dear? Nothing. It's just a girl at school. Nothing important, I replied. Despite that, I felt an urgent need to understand what was going on with me. I didn't want to be that crazy girl who hears voices in her head. Anyways, it was gone now, or so I thought the next day. But during the ever-dreadful math class, the voice returned. But this time it was even stronger than before. It wanted me to pour water from my bottle over my teacher's head. Maybe I'd always wanted to do this, but I was pretty sure that no one except me would appreciate it. Least of all the teacher. I tried my best to ignore the voice, and it worked. The voice was gone for now. But then it came back with a vengeance, and things stayed that way for days, then weeks. The voice narrated everything I did in the third person form. She wore a pink dress to school. She did her homework. She vandalized the school signs with her friends. She did this, she did that. My life had become a living nightmare. I started to get used to the voice, even though I didn't like it. But it was pretty neutral sounding and didn't want to control me as I'd arrived originally thought, all it did was stick by my side and narrate everything that I did throughout my day. It was even there when I was going to sleep, although sometimes it sounded sharper and more depressed, especially whenever I was angry or upset. I knew for a fact that I was not crazy. I knew that it would only stay for a brief period of time and then it would pass. No one would get hurt, but until it was gone, it would be my little secret and no one would know about it. I couldn't have been more wrong. One day, exactly a month away from my prom, a guy called Brad invited me on a date. He was on the football team. He was handsome and fit. Honestly, I had been crushing on him for a very long time. His invitation meant the world to me. We went for dinner that night and everything seemed perfect. It felt like something out of a fairy tale. Everything was out of this world. The candles, the food, and most importantly, him. I almost couldn't believe that it was real. Even the voice. It was really calm that day. And just when I thought that life couldn't get any better than that, he sent me a message after I'd gotten home and it said, I want to take you to the prom. Well, I didn't even have to think about what I'd say. I instantly replied, I'd love that. We will have so much fun. You might think that I slept like a baby that night with a smile plastered across my face. Well, it was pretty much the opposite that happened. The calmness of the voice started to fade. That night, the voice kept yelling at me in disapproval of me going to the prom with Brad. Could the voice be a reflection of my hidden feelings towards Brad? I was over the moon because of Brad's invitation, but I also knew that it hadn't even been a week since he'd broken up with his cheerleader girlfriend, and they'd probably be back together in a few days. That was their thing. They had always been like that but I ignored my gut and instead started yelling at the voice and of course, it yelled back at me. There is no doubt that it looked like I officially lost my mind. I went to school the next day feeling exhausted and angry and the voice, as usual, followed suit. It sounded as desperate and sad as I was that day. The prom was getting closer and closer and I looked more and more sad and depressed with every day that passed. I heard nothing but depressing words every time the voice spoke to me. It reminded me of all my old fears I used to have. The voice was becoming more and more unbearable. I went to the school bathroom and once I was there I yelled, GET OUT OF MY HEAD! I CANNOT BEAR LISTENING TO YOU ANYMORE! But the voice just calmly replied, Now she is yelling at no one. Now the rest of the girls in the bathroom will think she is insane. Once I heard the last few words, I froze. I remembered the sound of my father's laugh when he told me that whoever hears imaginary voices is insane. I imagined that when I came out of the bathroom, there would be a lot of people waiting for me, and they would just look at me and whisper to each other that I was crazy. And some girls had heard me scream, exactly as the voice told me would happen. They looked at me in a weird way. I couldn't bear it, so I ran away as fast as I could. When prom finally came around, it was only two weeks before the end of the school year. I was still trying to ignore the voice. Nothing had changed. I wore a red dress, put my hair up, and put on a silver tiara. I waited for Brad to come and take me to the prom, and during that time, I didn't hear as much as a whisper from the voice. The silence continued until I finally reached the party. Once I was dancing with Brad, the voice said, Now she is dancing with him unaware that he is looking at his ex-girlfriend and winking at her. 
That was what I had been most afraid of. I was afraid that Brad was still thinking about his ex-girlfriend. I pushed Brad away and screamed at him in front of everyone. If you still love her, just go be with her. Don't use me just to make her feel jealous. Everybody looked at me in astonishment. As Brad attempted to speak, I yelled at him again. Don't you dare lie to me. I know very well that you are still in love with her. The voice in my head told me everything. He shrugged and said, everybody warned me that you were a freak, but I never actually thought that you were that crazy. He then turned away and left me standing alone. Now everyone knew about the voice in my head. Oh no, what had I done? Had I just revealed my own secret? The next day, my best friend Monica called. She was panicking. A normal person should not hear voices in their head. You have to visit a psychiatrist immediately, she said. I thought it was going to be a step in the right direction, but it turned out to be much worse than I could ever have imagined. At first, I went with Monica to the school counselor, and I started to speak to him about the depression and sadness that I was feeling and told him about how my family expected nothing less than greatness from me. But once I started talking about the voice in my head, he suddenly sat upright in his chair, looked at me with seriousness, and said, This does not sound good at all. I had a ballet class to get to, so I told him that I had to leave. So he wrote down in his memo, Here's sounds in her head, which are nothing but hallucinations. She also thinks she is a ballerina. The school counselor called my parents and explained the whole situation to them. I came back home to find them looking at me with terror in their eyes. Mom hugged me and started crying. For the first time in my life, I saw a serious look upon my father's face. Mom told me everything that the counselor had told her. She also told me that he recommended that I should visit a psychiatrist for a diagnosis of my case, as the voice in my head was not a sign of anything good. It could be a serious sign of insanity. Well, I refuse to believe that. I couldn't be crazy. I had always expected that my life might have a few dips, but never as bad as that. I was literally losing my mind. We went to the psychiatrist and after hours and hours of continuous questions and me giving details of every bit of my story, I was bracing myself for the shocking diagnosis that I was about to hear. I was waiting to hear that I had gone insane. But what the psychiatrist told me was totally different from what I had expected. He told me that I was not imagining those voices. It was true that there was no one haunting me and trying to ruin my life, but the voice in my head was real nonetheless. It turned out that I had schizophrenia, and those voices that I was hearing were an exact reflection of my inner thoughts and feelings that I had always tried to conceal, like fear, anxiety, and expecting the worst all the time. My mind had me listening to calm voices when I was in a good mood and had me listening to sharp, loud voices when I was in a bad mood. The only treatment for my case was by taking medication that would make the voices go away or at least subside. And that was exactly what I did. With my parents next to me, I was able to successfully beat my illness and more. I wish that I had told them about what was happening to me from the start so they could have helped me discover what it was quicker. I no longer care what people think of me, and I no longer care about their comments about me. I don't care if I was the freak of our school. I've already graduated and gone to university. I am no longer worried about being unable to make the expectations of others. Whatever comes, it definitely won't be worse than hearing voices in my head. That was the story of me and the voices in my head. If you are feeling the same way or if you have a secret that you tried to conceal and failed at like me, please share it with us.